I do love a good glass of wine, but a glass of wine that's made even sweeter and brighter with fresh fruit? Now you're speaking my language. Traditional or authentic sangria is easily made from Spanish red wine, fresh fruit, and a little bit of brandy. It's essentially a boozy fruit punch that looks fancy, feels festive, and it's great for making ahead of time. Sangria is one of my favorite summer cocktails, and it's usually what I order when I'm at a rooftop bar in Laguna Beach or in a cozy tapas bar traveling around the world. But since none of us are doing a whole lot of traveling right now, I thought I would bring the sangria to you. So let me show you how to make it. Traditional sangria uses oranges, apples, and a lemon or lime, but honestly, there's endless variations to this recipe, which I'll talk about at the end. Since we're sticking with a more authentic version today, you'll need two oranges. The first one you'll juice, and this will naturally sweeten the wine, and the second orange you'll slice. After I've sliced the orange, I like to cut each slice into quarters. The smaller pieces mean that I can then top each individual glass with a little bit of fruit, which wouldn't be possible if the slices were large and round. Next, I'll slice one apple, remove the core, and then dice that into small pieces or wedges. There's no need to peel any of the fruit, but because you are adding it with the skin on, make sure to give it a good wash and scrub beforehand. You can also use any color of apple. I just love the bright green contrasting color of a Granny Smith. Lastly, I'll slice up one lemon and then quarter it the same as I did with the orange. My lemon today is pretty gargantuan in size, so I probably could have gotten away with using half of it, but we'll just roll with it. Once all of your fruit is chopped up into small pieces, grab a pitcher and toss the fruit in. I love this modern pitcher as it's beautiful and perfect for this sangria recipe, and I'll link it below. Though you'll see that it does get a little fuller than normal, and yes, I'm blaming my gargantuan lemon. Pour in the freshly squeezed orange juice and then grab your bottle of red wine. I usually use a Rioja wine for sangria, but I do have other wine suggestions on the recipe blog post, so make sure to check that out. When it comes to opening wine bottles, I actually like this part because of my handy dandy opener. It's a CO2 opener. It's got some foil cutters on the top to take off the top. And all you have to do is depress the needle right into the bottle, hit the top, and there's your bottle of wine open. Pour the wine on top of the fruit and watch how beautifully it trickles down. Then measure out half a cup of brandy. Brandy is again more traditional, but you could also use an orange liqueur, so feel free to use what you have on hand. Pour that on top and then if you'd like, you can add a little sweetener. This is optional, but I'll usually add a tablespoon or two of maple syrup and then give it a gentle stir. And I have to be extra gentle today, given how full my pitcher is. Now this next part is key, and that's letting the sangria chill in the fridge at least four hours or overnight. It maximizes the rich and fruity flavors, and it all melds together perfectly into the sangria recipe that you know and love. To serve the sangria, fill a glass with ice and pour the sangria on top. I like to transfer some fruit from the pitcher into each glass as well, as it just makes it a little more festive. And you can also top it off with plain or fruity sparkling water if you like it a little more bubbly. I personally prefer mine straight out of the pitcher and non-bubbly, but I do make sure to garnish each glass with a small orange slice before serving. Sangria is the perfect party drink recipe, especially for holidays and long weekends, and you can easily double this recipe in a large pitcher or even a punch bowl. The great thing about sangria, which hopefully you got from this video, is that it's endlessly customizable. You can use a wide variety of fruit, so feel free to use what you have on hand or what's in season. And you can even freshen it up with some fresh herbs or spices like ginger or a cinnamon stick. And of course, if you want it a little bit more boozy, you can add some more brandy, some cognac, or even triple sec. And if lighter cocktails are more your thing, just switch to white wine or add more seltzer water to keep it light and fresh. I do have separate recipes for a white wine sangria and a Moscato sangria on my website, so make sure to check those out if you're interested. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your family and friends, or someone you want to enjoy the sangria with, and I will see you again in the next video.